Are your AirPods causing serious damage? There's a ton of controversy around this subject, but a recent study shows that we might want to be a little bit cautious about using your Bluetooth headphones because this study strongly linked Bluetooth headphone usage to thyroid nodules. And these are basically tumors that grow in your thyroid gland. And it wouldn't be the first time that this type of wireless technology radiation has been linked to carcinogenesis. In fact, back in 2011, the International Agency of Research on Cancer from the WHO did conclude that radio frequency electromagnetic radiation from things like cell phones could possibly be linked to cancer. More recent studies have backed that up, finding that the first couple generations of wireless phones, so 2G, 3G, were linked to different brain tumors. And even though this type of radiation is non-ionizing, which is normally thought of as not dangerous, over the last decade or so, there's been a lot of work done on this topic. Especially nowadays, we're completely surrounded by different types of non-ionizing radiation, whether it's your microwave oven, your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, cell towers. So it's definitely something that we should be aware of. Now, this study came out last year and it is epidemiological, meaning it was not experimental. They didn't give some people Bluetooth headphones and some people didn't have Bluetooth headphones. They were looking at a population and trying to decipher whether or not wearing Bluetooth headphones was linked to this type of thyroid disease. But these researchers aren't stupid. They know that there can be a ton of confounding factors. So in order to adjust for this, they use something called propensity score matching. And basically what this means is that for everyone involved in this study, they tried to find a subsequent twin for that person. And these twins were matched in all of these different variables like sex and age and obesity. They take a lot of variables into account. One twin would have a high exposure to Bluetooth and the other twin would not. Then in order to confirm that their twin pairing method actually worked, they used an AI machine learning robot and found that their machine learning process predicted these thyroid nodules by about 95%. So in other words, if you gave this robot one of the two twins, it would pick which one had the thyroid nodule 95% of the time without actually knowing whether or not it had the nodule. And then when they looked at what variables they measured actually allowed the robot to predict, Aside from age, all of the biggest variables that allowed for this prediction were related to the wearing of Bluetooth headphones. If we look at this figure here, it shows you age was the biggest determinant. Then you have daily usage time, wearing the Bluetooth headphones in your ear. So in other words, AirPods, uh, listening to music with them, using them at work, wearing them overhead, like if they were beats or something, wearing them around your neck like you would with a over the head style Bluetooth headset, and so on and so on. Now, all of these variables were more predictive of thyroid nodules than even things like obesity and smoking and education, which are typically strongly tied to negative health outcomes. Now, again, this does not directly show like an experiment would that Bluetooth directly causes these, but if we combine the results of this finding and then look at animal and cell experiments where you actually can infer causality, then I think your eyebrows should be raised a little bit more. So if you look at any mainstream health organization or mainstream media, they'll all be quick to say, oh, it's there's no problem with Wi-Fi, there's no problem with Bluetooth, there's no evidence, there's no evidence. They love saying that. And then critics will argue that, while well, you're just looking at epidemiology, you're just looking at animals, you're just looking at cells, we need large human studies. But the problem with that is that that almost never happens outside of like a drug trial. And even the World Health Organization, when they're examining evidence for things like carcinogens, and really the entire field of toxicology is based off of looking at populations, deciphering trends from those populations, and then seeing in animals and in cells if that substance has any sort of toxicity. So to dismiss this based on the fact that there's no human randomized control trials is kind of like saying, well, you know, we don't have studies showing that arsenic is really carcinogenic. It's just from animal studies and then also cells and looking at populations. Obviously, we're never going to run an experiment giving people arsenic or not. That's just not going to happen. We need to be able to look at animal studies, cell studies, and also epidemiology and try to piece things together that way. So when we do that, what do we find? Well, last year, a cell study was published on the effects of Bluetooth radiation. And this is at the exact frequency and the exact power output that Bluetooth devices are typically used at. And in these studies, they showed things like increased oxidative stress, 
They showed impaired mitochondrial function and decreased cell viability, basically meaning that the cells could no longer grow and reproduce if they were exposed to Bluetooth. And some earlier animal studies showed that there was increases in inflammation, specifically in the brain, when exposed to this type of radiation. Again, increased markers of oxidative stress, leading to things like male infertility, and in some cases, even cancer. So when we think about radiation, typically you're thinking about like nuclear bombs and stuff like that, but there's a lot more to the story. Essentially, there's multiple different types of radiation, and all that radiation is is an electromagnetic wave that propagates through the air. And these types of waves are everywhere. They're released anytime that any sort of energy is released but you could at least do some damage mitigation by getting wired headphones you could do things like turning your phone on airplane mode when you're not using it you can even unplug your wi-fi at night a lot of people like to do that but ultimately a lot of your best protection from this is going to just come from your underlying health if you can make yourself more robust have a better antioxidant network boost your mitochondrial function, lower your inflammation, then you're going to be a lot more resilient to all of these types of insults. And if you want some personalized help with that, please reach out to us at PRISM. You can book a free call here. We help people optimize their health in any different domain. So whether it's gut health, mood issues, you wanna lose weight, fatigue, anything you need. We've worked with about 500 clients at this point and we offer personalized support. So definitely go check that out if you're interested. So there's an entire electromagnetic spectrum. If you see my video on red and infrared light, you would know that certain types of radiation are actually very healthful and can promote tons of unique uh, therapeutic effects. But never before in human history have we been really exposed to this type of radiation, at least at this level. And ionizing radiation, which is X-rays and gamma rays, these are very obviously toxic because they work by essentially ripping apart the molecules directly in your cells and in your tissues, and then everything obviously goes downhill from there. And while these lower level types of EMF or electromagnetic radiation um, do not have that effect, they still have effects on cells that are measurable. For instance, probably the most well-studied effect of this type of radiation on the cellular level is their ability to open what are called calcium channels. And calcium is very important for the signaling of cells because normally the amount of calcium that's freely available in cells is quite low. And then it only really ramps up when there's some type of event. So in your brain, this could be one neuron trying to communicate with another when your brain's very active. Or in the heart, this is how the heart pumps. It pumps in and out calcium. So the amount of calcium in your cells is very tightly regulated. And when you have calcium overload, then things go really wrong. This overloads the mitochondria. It overloads all these different enzymes within the cells. And this can lead to what's called excitotoxicity. So essentially cells can start to die because of this overload of calcium. This also impairs mitochondrial function. It can drive inflammation. And high levels of intracellular calcium are found in pretty much any degenerative disease that you can think of. And as it turns out, microwave radiation, including Bluetooth, can directly stimulate these calcium channels to open up and allow more calcium in. So a couple of years ago, there was a great review paper written by one guy, and he basically went through all the evidence and said, all of these agencies that are saying that this is safe, they really need to look at the evidence again, because we have a lot of mechanistic reasons to believe that this type of radiation can be harmful. And just reading through one of the tables here of the reported biological responses to microwave radiation, you have oxidative stress, which is, you can think of like creating free radicals and things of that nature, single-stranded breaks in cellular DNA, double-stranded breaks, um, those are ubiquitously seen in cancer. I mean, that's a genetic mutation. So you have cancer itself and other types of genetic mutations. Breakdown of the blood-brain barrier, which is obviously not good. Your brain should not be permeable to uh, different components of the blood. Male and female infertility, we talked about this before. You have depression through the activation of these calcium channels. You have melatonin depletion, which is obviously very important for your sleep cataracts, tachycardia, arrhythmias, sometimes leading to sudden cardiac death, because uh, as we discussed, calcium is very important for the pumping of your heart. So what do we make of all this? Well, to me at least, it's pretty clear that there's something going on here. I mean, I don't know if the effect is that, that huge, but I definitely wouldn't be wearing Bluetooth headphones all the time. 
I actually switched over to wired myself. And look, we're around this type of radiation all the time nowadays. So unless you want to go live in some third world country or some remote island, you're going to be exposed to cell phone towers, to Wi-Fi, to Bluetooth, to microwave, GPS, satellites. Unfortunately, we are just bathing in this stuff constantly. And that's probably one of the reasons why it's hard to detect an effect in a lot of these studies because you can't really control for it. I mean, it might be difficult to see that the Bluetooth headphones that you're wearing is still opening your calcium channels and causing strand breaks in your DNA when everything else is as well. Finally, if you wanna get any lab testing without a doctor, super quick and easy, you can go through Revelation Diagnostics. All you gotta do is go to the website, pick out your labs, add them to cart, and then go find a lab near you. You can get them drawn and you'll, and you'll get the results sent back to you. Use code ANALYZE at checkout for 10% off of that. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.